Hi, I'm Chin Lu. And I'm Sal, and this is Our Next Make. We've been thinking a lot lately about gift giving, because whether it's a holiday, a birthday, or some other celebration, there's always an opportunity to give someone a gift. And as makers, we love to use our creative juices to make something special for our loved ones. That's right, when the children in our lives were younger, we would often make them games and toys. But as they've gotten older, they remind us that they prefer cash. And even with that, we find a creative way of delivering it. For example, for graduation, we made a cap and gown origami holder. For their birthdays, we made an origami shirt. And for Christmas, we made them keepsake boxes. And now it's the Lunar New Year season, yet another opportunity to give some money. Traditionally, my family would give out red envelopes with money in it, representing good fortune. And we thought it'd be a great opportunity for us to design money holders. That's right, and since it's the year of the rabbit, we thought we would use that as inspiration for each of our designs. So let's see what we come up with. I've always loved the look of string art and the geometric nature of the design. I want to incorporate it into my money holder as a way to keep the gift card in place. Let's make a prototype to test out the look. With some cardboard and elastic string, this should hold back the corners of the card securely. Now for the main body of the card holder, I sketched a few ideas and I really like the look of a bunny along one edge of the card holder. I'm keen on trying out some moving parts in the 3D print, so I'm toying with the idea of a combination lock-like tumbler, but with three segments of the bunny's body. I wanted to see if I could use the rotation of the body segments to prevent the card from coming out when not properly aligned. After some design peer review with Sal, he suggested that perhaps just one rolling segment is enough to get that effect. I agree completely, and I want to make sure that it prints properly. For the modeling work, I turned to SolidWorks for Makers and used X-Shape to get the organic shape of the bunny that I'm looking for. As I am a Mac user, I was able to run X-Shape in my Safari browser right from my Makers cloud account. For the rotating segment, I implemented a dimple technique where I put in half spheres at each end with a 0.6mm clearance to its complementary hole. I used an important image as a reference to match a sketch of the Chinese character for rabbit, then use that sketch to make a shallow cut in my base. I exported the STL and set up the support structures necessary to get my model printed. I find that using acetone to clean the surface helps to take off the shine and soften the surface for painting. Be careful handling acetone, it has a strong aroma and you should be careful working closely with an open container. I start by wetting the brush and drying off excess water as a damp brush will keep the paint near the tip of the brush and help with the brush cleaning when I'm done. I start with the inset areas where the characters are with black paint. Anything that is brushed on outside can be wiped off with a dry rub or damp towel. Multiple coats will be needed to get a good coverage. I think I applied three or four coats. One of my pleasures in life is to get paint all over my fingers. But acrylic paint is easy to get off with some warm water and soap. Now that it is all dry, it's time for some string art. I'm using a silver elastic thread that is often used for bead jewelry. You can use anything you think is flexible and can provide elasticity in case you want to put in multiple items in the card holder. The design worked out well, framing the Chinese character, too, for rabbit. Now, sliding the card in and out of the holder is frictionless, and to keep it in, just push the rabbit's elbow down to snap it in place so that the card can't fall out. The string art keeps the card in place as well. I'm also using X-Shape to design my card holder, but instead of aiming for a smooth design, I'm going for a low polygon look. I can easily achieve this by simply creasing all of the edges. That's exactly what I want. I also want to add the same Chinese character that Chin Lu used in her design. X-Shape has this really cool command where I can grab a sketch from any other design. I just search for it, use the automatic tags to filter just the Chin Lu's designs, and then place the sketch where I want it. I'll use it to make a quick cut, and now the design is looking great. Let's take a quick look at two features I've added to the other side. The first is a large opening for your thumb to push the card out, and the other V-shaped detail is what I'm calling a friction spring. It has a small oversized bump on the inside that makes the opening in that area too small for the card. When the card is inserted, it flexes the V-shaped spring downward, creating just enough upward force to hold the card in place. Now I think the design is ready to print. To verify this, 
I'll use XShape's 3D print command to visualize the design inside a 3D printer. I can add any printer from a huge library and see exactly how my design will fit. I can also see where the design will need support material. I can actually paint the model with these colors by using the draft analysis command. Not only can I dial in whatever angle my 3D printer can handle without supports, but these colors are dynamic, so I can go in and modify the design until the red faces go away. Now I know I've got a design that will print without supports. I'm using my Sindo printer to produce the print, and now I'm turning my attention to painting. Chin Lu is really the artist in the family, so I'll keep it simple. I paint the raised portions of one design in solid white, and then just hit the highlights of the other design with a dry brush technique. Chin Lu showed me that you can get paint on the brush and then wipe most of it off before you lightly brush the high points of the design. I found that it works particularly well on sharp edges if you hold the brush at a very low angle and swipe across the bristles. With the paint dry, I can try out the design. The card fits quite nicely, and the friction spring that I designed holds the card really well. The opening in the back even makes it easy to remove the card when you need it. This turned out great. I'm so happy with it. I enjoyed designing a movable part and then having the little dimples inside to allow it to spin and we could print it all in one piece. The only thing I really didn't enjoy was removing the support structures that existed underneath its belly. It was very difficult to get to. But otherwise, I really think this turned out the way I had imagined. As for your cell, I think it is awesome. I really like the fact that you were able to design this with no support structures. Yeah, that's my favorite part about designing for 3D printing. Thinking about how you can uh, minimize, if not completely avoid, the need for supports. It's a really fun challenge. I also loved how um, when I was designing this, I was able to take the X-shaped model, which is all smooth, and uh, add creases to it. So you can get this sort of low polygon uh, effect. And it was really fun to, to do. Mm -hmm. It looks really cool. Um, for yours, Chino, I think that this is uh, it's remarkable. You know, not only did you use 3D modeling to build this, um, but you incorporated the string design. Um, you did a wonderful paint job. Uh, you created something that I've never seen before. It's completely uh, unique. Uh, it's great. That's the best part about making things. So we hope this inspired you to make your own money holder. And if it did, please let us know in the comments. And until then, we'll see you on our next make.